move on and um, brief into another international keynote. While we're looking at talking about the topic core principles for building a successful customer centric organization. And we're gonna be joined by Alexandra Swerzneka, the director of customer experience OLX group. While Alexandra is a passionate customer experience practitioner and a business leader. She's the director of the customer centricity at the OLX group a global marketplace network that serves more than 350 million people every month. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to tune into the international keynote by Alexandra. Over to you. Hi, everyone. Very happy to be with you here today. Uh, let me share my screen and we can start. Perfect. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I will be talking to you about the core principles for building a successful customer centric organization. Uh, and let me just shortly introduce myself um, and recap what was said. My name is Aleksandra Świerzyńska. I know it's a surname that it's not easy to pronounce. I'm working as mentioned for Olex Group. I used to work for McKinsey, serving clients from different industries around customer centricity, customer focus transformation, etc. So it was my bread and butter and really the topic that, that I love and happy to talk uh, to you about. So what we will focus on within the next couple of minutes. First of all, we'll zoom into core principles of a successful customer-centric transformation or building blocks that every customer-focused organization should think about. And while talking about it and deep diving into different building blocks, I will also mention a few successful cases and tips and tricks how to make it work. Uh, so uh, to start with a very interesting um, data point, 80% of companies believe that they deliver superior customer experience, while only 8% of customers agree to that. It's 10 times less. The gap is huge. Uh, but I believe that that's why we are all together here and that's why we are working within uh, in CX to actually address all customer needs and make the life of our customers even greater and more seamless. Uh, but as mentioned, it's not easy. Uh, it's, as you can see on the slide, it's not easy. As our customers have a big needs and requirement, starting from being available, uh, us as a company is being available to, to them 24 seven. Um, our customers require intuitive and smooth experience. They wanna do things fast uh, with a click, uh, one click uh, or so. They wanna have a personalized content um, our customers also require us to provide a fully integrated cross touch points experience, not mentioning safety and data privacy. And those are just a couple of trends. We know that uh, that world is evolving. We have events like COVID-19 uh, that also changed the customer's behavior and needs. But what we can do to make sure that our organization is prepared for that? There are a couple of building blocks that it's good to keep in mind. First of all, having a right vision and strategy. And I know it, it might sound like everyone knows it, but not many companies really do it right and crack it in the right manner to inspire the organization and the employees and, and make the organization and employees really follow. Um, the second one is about ways of working to innovate product and services. So from one hand, understanding what our customer wants, how the journey looks like, what are the personas, what are the pain points, what are the opportunities around needs and wants of our customers, and then using agile, using design thinking or, or different methodologies to actually build those services and products that our a lot. What is also important here is this continuous improvement element. So measuring, understanding um, what's the perception, what are the behaviors of the customers around the features, products, services we created and making sure that their feedback is embedded uh, in the product and, and the product is improved. And last but not least, big building blocks and the part uh, of the pyramid are enablers. So from one hand, the customer experience measurement system, making sure that we measure the right things in, in the right moment and bring them back to the organization. The right tools and systems, so from a tool like Medallia, Qualtrics, um, Zendesk, Salesforce, so CRM tools, uh, customer feedback management tools, but also many others that enable our employees to act uh, on customer feedback to collect and to act on the customer feedback. And last but not least, it's around 
governance, culture, and capabilities. And someone said the culture eats strategy for breakfast, and there might be some truth in that or a big truth in that. Um, but it's really about, from one hand, building the organization and the governments in the way that people or our teams can work and break silos and can work in those cross-functional teams to deliver to our customer expectations. On the other hand, there is a clear sponsor in the leadership team, etc. Uh, but th that, is all, that is also linked to our culture and capabilities. So we need to make sure that, that our employees and understand the customer centricity. They also have the right skill sets to address a customer needs and wants and build those products and services our customer wants. And let me uh, deep dive during the next couple of minutes as we don't have a lot of time, I will only focus on some aspects of, of the pyramid or, or those building blocks or principles to be customer, uh, to build customer-centric organization. Uh, and uh, let me start from the first one about a vision. And um, yeah, we probably all know those two examples, Zappos and Amazon. Amazon, I probably don't have to introduce it, it everywhere and a super customer centric company. Zappos is also a retailer um, selling clothes, shoes, etc., and multiple items. And they are also known to be a very customer centric. And the visions of those companies are also very interesting. From one hand, Zappos wants to live and wow, those wow experiences. On the other hand, Amazon wants to build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online. So uh, what is important that those visions are and every other vision should be. So every vision should be inspiring and easy to understand. Uh, and I think what you can see in the example of Zappos and Amazon, it's kind of checked. Uh, but it's important that the vision doesn't contain a jargon or, or the words or expressions that some people might not understand in our organization. And it should be ambitious and inspiring. So people really feel they can connect and, and they want to go with our leadership team and, and with the whole organization towards that, that vision and that goal. It's important that it's cascaded to the organization. So it cannot just stay on the top. It shouldn't be only once communicated somewhere on, on, on hands or a company event, et cetera. It's important that every employee knows what, what does it mean for them. So how they can follow that vision and how they can put it in practice in their in the, uh, day-to-day jobs. Uh, and, and that element of, of cascading it to the organization, to different parts, departments, uh, different seniorities, it's really important for the vision to be alive. Uh, clear measures around the vision uh, and translating vision into strategy, that's also one important component. Uh, and making sure that there are clear KPIs that, that our employees understand where is this end goal where we want to go as an organization, and they can also apply it to their day-to-day -day job. And as mentioned already twice, embedded in a day-to-day -day job. So it's important that our employees understand it, know what is also required from them, how do they contribute to achieve those vision, and then uh, it's really a part of their goals, of their OKRs, uh, and yeah, ideally also a part of their environment where they work, like physical space where you can see the vision, uh, etc. You can see the, the customer centricity in every corner in the office or the virtual space that now we are probably not working in the offices or not everywhere. Uh, then uh, I mentioned a ways of working uh, to build up the product and services people love. Uh, and what is important is, uh, from one hand, how to have the right process in, in a place, and of course, what, what we are delivering to our customers. And talking about the process, um, let me walk you through um, a, a process that we follow at Olex, and I believe also many other companies might also follow this or, or, or sort of this process. Um, first of all, what we always do when we build products is to understand and empathize with our customers. And here from understanding who are the customers we are serving, what are their personas, what are their needs, um, what are the journeys, the pain points, um, uh, but, but not only listening to customers, but really digging, dig, digging deeper uh, to understand what are the true motivations um, and, and needs that the customers have. And then the second stage is about mapping and prioritizing. So uh, here you can see examples from our one one of our projects uh, in jobs. So we are um, um, classified company and have a different uh, types of businesses. But one of them is actually a jobs a category and the job business where we basically through our platform wants to connect 
job seekers with a job list or so companies and recruiters that look for uh, for people um, and, and those are the the elements uh, and the screen print screens from uh, from that project and actually as said the second uh, phase and the second step is about mapping and prioritizing and we, here we actually uh, from one hand mapped what are the needs and, and mapped the needs to different personas um, on the other hand, we also understood how frequently are those needs. We mapped the journey. We understood what are the bigger opportunities based on quantitative and qualitative data uh, to focus on. In the second phase, while already having the opportunities that we wanted to zoom in, we ideated on the potential solutions uh, and then going from a wide brainstorming to then zooming in and understanding what are the solutions that are potentially the best from a customer and business perspective. And then the, the next phase is about designing and testing, where uh, depending on the solution, we really try to go and, and, and brainstorm and, and ide not ideate, but actually test with the customers. Sometimes we also ideate with the customers, so let's stay, stay back. Uh, but in, in that case of the jobs, uh, we actually uh, design certain solutions, mock up on the papers, and then quick, uh, quick mock ups or a clickable prototypes. And then we really took them to the customers to understand what are the better solutions uh, for the customers. And that's a process that actually can last a while, uh, depending on, on how many iterations and, and what's the feedback um, from, the custom, from the customers that we still need to aggregate. And then listening improved, that's super important uh, element of, of the whole, whole journey of the whole process. Understanding even if the product or the feature or service is launched, it's, it's very important to understand what our customers are telling us, how satisfied are they, how are the behavioral metrics looking like, uh, to make sure that whatever is happening there we can capture and actually that feedback is captured to really improve the product. Uh, then, uh, as I said, it's important to have the right process in place so our employees can, can actually have that mindset and, and walk, uh, mindset of being customer centric and, and actually put it um, in, in motion. But of course, uh, super important, even more important, perhaps, it's what our customers see. And here I wanted to bring to you two examples where we actually understood through the, 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 in the process, we understood the customer. Uh, personas, we understood uh, what are the needs uh, of those personas and also the pain points. And one of the opportunity that we defined based on the process that I um, outlined uh, on, on the previous slide um, was that uh, we understood that one of the most biggest opportunities and the most important um, part of the journey is about um, matching, of course, candidate with the recruiters, which is the end KPIs and, and the what we optimize for, but what is super important is to have an accuracy, increase accuracy of matching in jobs recommendation. And here we deploy our, uh, we deploy machine learning and our teams who are working around that topic. And what we did, uh, basically you can see a screenshot here from our, one of our platforms where we really based on information that we got from, from the candidates. And here we also used certain uh, approaches to increase um, the number of answers and information that we're getting from customers Customers, we are providing better and better jobs, uh, jobs recommendations. Uh, and here we got two and a half million replies in jobs recommendation over three and a half million uh, impressions. It's, it's from our um, a testing phase for the European market, but it really brings the results that we are looking for. And another example that I would like to bring to your attention, it's actually not from a job space, but it's from a motor space. So we also have a category that uh, that the links and, and matches the people that want to buy a car and want to sell a car. And here, very important, the motor's price intelligence. So what, what we discover as a big need uh, from our customers is to actually give them uh, information about uh, the sellers, especially give them information about what is the right price? What is the fair price based on the model of the car and, and the conditions of the car, etc.? And this is actually what we are doing both in India, but we are uh, and as well uh, multiple European countries with very good results as well. Uh, and the last uh, deep dive that I would like to make uh, today is around um, actually customer experience measurement system, which is a very important enabler. As many people say, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. Uh, and I think uh, many, many cases it's actually true. Uh, and then what is important to, to actually work with customer uh, perception, uh, customer insights, but also work with the data. There are a couple of, of principles that are important to follow and to understand while 
um, embedding the technology and customer experience system into the organization. So um, the move should be, um, or depending where, where you are, but but the end stage should be insights uh, democratization. And here I know that many in many times companies tend to keep insights that are available only, or the data available only for, or making it easily available only for certain uh, stakeholders, while actually making sure that different level of stakeholders from different uh, departments have access to the data. It's important, and of course, it's very important to provide them data that is uh, crucial for their job as well. So there might be different pieces of information for marketing department, for customer support sales, or, or the product uh, people or product managers. Uh, but definitely, that should be a place where employees can go to understand CSAT, NPS, uh, other metrics, and and build on, on, on those and, and put them into motion when um, while improving interactions with customers. And the second one, which is very important, it's just a second, I have to pause um, and speed up as well. And so the second thing which is important is uh, going from delayed feedback collection and an analysis to real time and after touch point. Uh, so many times we are receiving NPS or CSAT already quite some time after the interaction with customers. And in many cases, it, it's not tangible enough because it's the high level metric that we are receiving. So it's very important to try to capture the customers just after the call with, with the sales or the customer service, or just after there was a click or, or the interaction on the platform. And actually both of those situations are easy to capture, um, but it should be ideally real time and it should be after interaction, so after touch point. Um, focusing only on customer, from focusing only on customer data to linking customer data with operational and financial metrics. And that's also another very important aspect to make sure that NPS and CSAT is linked uh, to operational metrics and, and finance. From one hand, we should understand the link to value. So know what, what are these business drivers and business results. Um, and how NPS is linked to business uh, results or CSAT is linked to business results, which is a great metric for uh, the leadership to understand, but also for the company to, to be convinced and to, to really understand why we are, in um, many cases, measuring NPS or CSAT and focusing on those metrics as a target. But it's, uh, but yeah, but it's also very important, even on the more operational level or granular level in the organization, thinking about product managers or customer support or sales folks to to understand from one hand what is NPSC set so that perceptional metric on the other hand also to understand the behavioral metric so how our customers behave on the platform and make sure that we understand those two perspectives to or to from one hand deep dive into root causes and on the other hand also um, getting into the right uh, assumptions um, to further improve. And last but not least, it's about from being reactive to being proactive. So um, many times we are focusing on customer surveys uh, after touch point or uh, after touch point interaction or even interactions or, or surveying our customers days later or weeks later. But what is important and now in this big data world, it, it's really possible is to be proactive, so to understand what our customers might want and actually try to suggest them um, that or try to optimize for their wants in the future. And one of the examples from, from Alex and also another energy client that I work with, uh, where they did it successfully, was to actually understand what are the, the customers that are very probable to churn and address those customers. So where this, the certain triggers or certain things that the customer were doing when they were about to churn and to finish the contract with that energy um, energy provider that I mentioned about. Uh, and what the company did is, is actually collected a di different pieces of information, a different data sets to uh, create a model that was showing what are the customers that are uh, likely to, to churn and then trying to uh, to call to interact with those customers to make sure they stay with the company or to attract them to, to convince them to stay with the company. Um, so yeah, as I said, um, we had, it was quite a, a run or a, a quick uh, walk through um, a couple of principles or the principles and the deep dive into them. Um, as I said, uh, was, was, was a quick one. Uh, I'm happy to um, connect with you afterwards, after that slot 
or through LinkedIn. You can see my LinkedIn uh, on the page, so please feel free to connect uh, in case you would like to discuss anything or just stay in touch uh, and exchange um, about yeah insights and insights for customers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, it was a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much. So well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this brings us to the end of the World CX Summit. Firstly, a big, big thank you to Alexandra for joining us and giving us your valuable time as well.